Um, the first five cards deal with your love, romance, relationship sector, and the bottom five cards deal more with work, career, and finances. And I have to say, I am really surprised for this swift turnaround because I believe it was last week where I mentioned you kind of need to, you know, let other areas of your life go and focus your energy on work and career. So I don't know if you guys are listening or just... Um, there's a big shift here in your career and I feel like everything looks really good for this week, okay? So uh, I'm glad to see that change, um, that energy change happening for you guys. Um, first of all, let me talk about the love sector. Uh, you have some good things that are coming in, but you also need to just kind of do this massive energetic um, kind of like casting away of your old self, of old relationships and relationship patterns. Otherwise, it's really going to interfere with the good things that are trying to come in. So I feel like there are two separate spreads here, almost, when it comes to your love relationship. First of all, we have here the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups, it's a very uh, faded type of a relationship. Two people had to go through their own respective karma and unfortunately they came together so that these karmic lessons can kind of play out and then once the karmic lessons play out the relationship ended because there wasn't a need for the two of you to be together anymore and when the relationship ended I feel like it's it was something that was very difficult for you to accept it was also a situation where emotionally you felt very depleted without the other person. Um, the Six of Cups in the reverse, it's also snapping out of your own naivety, seeing a situation through rose-colored glasses rather than seeing the reality of the situation. So it's almost like this wake-up call. I can't do this anymore or the other person is not exactly what I thought. And I feel like a lot of the time, Scorpios, when you in love, when you're in love with somebody as a fixed sign, you love very, very deeply, and you stay in situations, and you make a lot of sacrifices, and you tend to stay in it for a little bit too long, and it really corroded, you know, um, your self-esteem, but also it it really detracted you from your life path. So one of the ways in which we know that um, it's a karmic connection and that it's, you know, you're staying in it, in it way past its expiration date is if your financial situation starts getting really rocky, when you're around the other person, you constantly, and I mentioned this for, I believe, Capricorn or Taurus, one of them. Um, but I did mention that, you know, um, energetically, it might not be the other person or it, it has nothing to do with what they did or what you did. But energetically, when you're with them, finances just disappear. Financial prosperities just dry up. And so if you've been through a relationship that is similar to this, you're finally seeing it for what it is. You're finally, you know, letting go of this fantasy of what it could be so that you can take better care of yourself and to put yourself first, okay? What is associated with this relationship here is um, <clears throat> you might have been dealing with somebody who was um, dealing with depression. It could be like mild depression, moderate depression. Usually we need to have that the moon card in order to, you know, denote how severe it is. But this is somebody that is battling their own demons, okay? And in a lighter sense, there's a lot of guilt, a lot of fear, a lot of pain and heartache associated with the falling out between you and this person. I feel like there's guilt, there's fear, there's a lot of, you know, staying up at night wondering what happened, feeling like it's your fault. But ultimately, it's a relationship. It requires both parties to be on board in order for it to take off. So if the other person's not on board, it's not really your fault. So this is the week where you are coming out of this state of apprehension, guilt, and just, you know, feeling hopeful that you're finally seeing it for what it is, that it was, it came into your life for that time, for that season, 
but it's also leaving your life because it's no longer serving its pur purpose. It's no longer on your path and the person is no longer destined for you. Or you might have thought they were destined for you, but life has other plans in store for you. Okay, so we have here the death card. This is a major arcana card. This is also your card. Picking up the pieces of your life, trying to turn over a blank page, taking control of your life, trying to, you know, create that future for yourself. Okay, so I see you moving on. And once you move on, you don't look back, which is really good. And this is what I really admire. You can overcome some tremendous things that other signs cannot overcome. You can pick yourself up, but once you are determined to emotionally move on from a situation or mentally move on from a situation. You have the determination to do it and you do it without looking back. It's almost like turning cold and not being, um, not being emotionally affected by what happened in the past anymore. So you're picking up the courage and you're moving forward with your life. So this is why I would say it's almost like two readings. You're at this state in your, um, this, this point in your life right now. We have the Empress, and the Empress is basically, um, financially, she's abundant. She looks good. She smells good, you know, and you can be a, a male or female watching this. The Empress is a very neutral energy. It It's gender neutral. It deals with taking care of ourselves, you know, um, getting a haircut, putting makeup on, uh, putting cologne, perfume on, dressing nice, going out, having a good time, taking care of ourselves and not really letting all the baggage and all these uh, disappointments and the shame and the guilt from the past affect us because we are so secure in ourselves that we don't need the, the, the self-doubt and the self-limiting talk affect how we feel about our confidence. So I feel like many of you are emerging from this state to this state. And if we're talking about, you know, a span of a week, I feel like even though you have moved on, there's still a lot of like what ifs in your head. So even though emotionally you have come to realize this was a bad relationship, there's still that mental energy, the rumination, you know, what if, and there's still a little bit of guilt here. So I don't know where that's coming from, but I, I feel like you're, you're still thinking about it even though emotionally you have moved on. Um, for those of you who are dating, we have the Empress here. And this is somebody that really wants to get married, have children. I'm feeling with this world card, I'm feeling like they feel incomplete without children. You might be at a point in your life where biologically, you know, the clock is ticking. And you're like, is now or never, I need to move on. I need to move on from these relationships to find Mr. or Mrs. Right so that I can settle down, have children and, you know, complete that cycle because my time is running out. So I, I feel this element here about you being more conscientious about your own life, your own time and not wanting to waste time anymore, dwelling and living in this state where it's, it's a very naive, you know, uh, let's love each other and not worry about anything else. It's not very practical. You're now coming into a space of practicality where you want a relationship that has a future or that has a destination in mind so that you can work towards the same goals in the same direction with the relationship partner. Um, we have the world as well. And the world usually indicates to me uh, dating outside of your usual type, outside of the geographical location, or dealing with people that are culturally, ethnically, linguistically different from you. So if you are testing the waters, if you're going out, you're going to be attracting all of these types. They're worldly. They're culturally different. There's a lot of, um, I almost feel like this sense of novelty, you know, the, because you're so different, the energy exchange between the two of you is going to be very passionate. You will have a lot of learn, um, a lot to learn from each other. There might also be, um, it's, it's like looking at somebody who's very exotic and, and, and feeling like they're a novelty item. So you might be initially drawn to them, but then you also know that there's more to it that there's more to be had, there's a growth potential. So I feel like 
meeting people that are on the same path, that want commitment, that want the same things from you, that's going to be coming up for you. So think of it as a test to kind of really test whether or not you're willing to settle because this relationship seems to me like it's burdensome. It's, it's difficult and it's karmically just, you know, it's something you have to go through because it's a test so that you can get yourself here where you're abundant, where you are where you feel good about yourself when you're vibrating at this frequency that's when you're going to be able to attract good things you can't expect to attract good things when you're depressed when you're not leaving the bed when you're like not taking care of yourself when you don't love yourself so i feel like there's a big paradigm shift happening for you guys where you start to understand the rule of attractions where you start to take yourself a little bit more seriously where you stop to waste time on things that were not right for you you cut your losses and you move on. So really good things happening. Um, the Empress deals with pregnancy. Okay, so for those of you who are pregnant, who are dealing with a partner who is pregnant, I feel like things coming full circle. So birthing and, you know, um, I, I see a lot of photos. So I don't know, pregnancy photos or even engagement photos or even uh, getting pregnant and then deciding to get married. Um, if you are dating, be careful about that, okay? Getting somebody pregnant and then feeling like we have to get married. So that's just just putting it out there. Um, other areas of your life. So finances. It looks really good. We have here the King of Pentacles and in the upright position, it basically means saving for uh, a rainy day, being able to kind of like um, be more mature with your spending, taking better care of your financial resources, understanding that you worked hard for the money so that you don't squander it on, you know, um, meaningless things. This is also reining in your financial resources to see how much you have and how much you can spend and creating some type of a budget for yourself. So I feel like an, a, a a maturation process when it comes to how you handle financial resources. We have a really good work card here, the Three of Pentacles. This is a card about learning from other people, collaborating, expanding, um, being called in to be a consultant to somebody. They're asking for your advice. You're giving them feedback. And um, it's also a card for contractors. So I feel like a lot of projects, a lot of contracts that are going to be falling on your lap. And so I feel like for the rest of this month, you're not going to need to worry so much about finances. Okay. That doesn't mean it's a free for all and to squander your wealth. It basically mean, means that in the past, you are aware of how money has been squandered. This is like, this is a card of power in the, um, the way that it's uh, interpreted. It's a card of, you know, having everything at your disposal, making your money work for you. So having power in the reverse, squandering it, r financial resources that you should hold on to and put in the bank, it's being squandered left and right because you're very careless about, you know, um, your financial resources. And I feel like you are looking back at this as well. And also coming to the realization that I need to start over. I need to start saving up. We're coming from a four in the reverse to a three. And the three is not, the, the pentacles are not painted in. So I feel like you are going to have to rebuild your financial foundation. You're working from scratch. But you have a really good footing right now. And you're at a good time to be doing all of this. Okay? So... Um, aside from that, I don't really have other messages. I feel like you're making major strides in your romantic life and also in your financial life. And you need to be conscientious about this because you're making more than enough. So there should be, you know, enough savings in your um, bank account on a consistent basis every month. So the days of swandering and being reckless and irresponsible, I feel like that's falling away into the past because you have major transition, good energy is coming through. Okay.